Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. This is episode 214 of A Wee Bit of Alchemy. And today we're going to continue the conversation on the three Dantians with the upper Dantian. First, I'd like to kind of go back and do an overview, and uh, then we'll go forward with the with the upper Dantian. So the just for those who are just tuning in, uh, I recommend going back and checking out episode 213, and because we've got into the lower Dantian in some some depth, but we'll do a we'll do an overview and hit some of the highlights. So the idea of Dantian is uh, translates to sea of energy or the cinnabar field, uh, the field of vitality. There's a, a lot of different translations for it. But the, the main idea is it's this place where energy can be amplified and th thus feed other things. And um, so Ken Cohen said uh, that every cell in your body is actually a Dantian. That is, you can, you can use any, any location in your body to amplify your chi. So that's, uh, uh, we started that, that's like the broadest understanding of it. But when we talk about the Dantian, we're, you know, when we talk about the Dantian, we're generally speaking about the lower Dantian, that is below, below your navel. And, uh, but there, when we talk about the three Dantians, the three primary energy centers, we have that, the area below the navel, we have the heart, chest, and the uh, uh, the heaven's eye, the third eye, um, upper uh, upper part of your of your head, and uh, but um, just going back to the the lower dantian, the ordinarily people associate it. I wouldn't say people. It's, it's for years I labored under the assumption that the Dantian which was a point on your your skin, your lower abdomen there that uh, uh, was about you know an inch and a inch and three quarters below your navel. Some people said it was the the uh, chi high point at which is the uh, conception vessel number six. Uh, another says it was the yin jiao point was con conception vessel number seven, and none of those. None of that really matters because it's what they are what uh, Young Jing Ming calls false Dantian. That is, they're kind of the the entry to it. They're a way of locating and and getting you gaining you entry to what he calls the real Dantian, which is at the very center of your lower abdomen. And the uh, way I have come to understand it is that that not just the uh it's not just a, a specific spot in the lower abdomen but it's the the whole lower abdomen the whole pelvic bowl as uh is the location of the dantian so we have the substantial aspect which is the physical um shape muscles and um uh organs and uh all the all that's going on there, the nerves and everything that's going on there, that's the physical aspect, and that is the substantial aspect of the Dantian. And that is as important as the insubstantial part, which is the energy field itself. So all this activity that's happening in your lower abdomen there is creates an energy field, which is your your the actual field part of it, the the part when we think about Dantian, that is the you know the important part. It's the energy field, and this lower abdomen part is it's governed by what's called the enteric nervous system, which is part of the the uh, autonomic nervous system. It's your second brain, and it governs all the actions that are happening there in your in your abdomen, your gut. So your your gut feeling is coming from your Dantian. Your knowledge, the knowledge that you're getting from, uh, you know, from that, the, 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 that gut feeling, that's, that is part from your second brain. And uh, there is, it's also an area where 
which is it has a lot of neuro neurotransmitters, and including more serotonin, much more serotonin than it's produced in the brain. So a lot of what we look for in, from Tai Chi, that is that that calming effect, that sense of uh, being centered and balanced, that is comes from being able to to engage this second brain, this at, at a it's happening at a pre-conscious level, but we're bringing our awareness there so that we're engaging that pre-conscious activity that's occurring in the uh, in the in the Dantian. And uh, when we do that, we it activates things. That more chi goes into your into that area, and it uh, it then radiates throughout the whole system. So uh, we like we did last week. Lots of ways to stimulate this 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 lower dantian, primarily through breathing. You press down with your diaphragm. You squish down on your internal organs. And that stimulates, creates a uh, a, a piezoelectric charge, which which gets the attention of all the connective tissue that's happening there in your in your lower abdomen, and you get a field, you get an energy field out of that. So being able to bring your awareness to your dantian through your breathing, so you're actually feeling your lower abdomen, and not just on the surface, but actually halfway in. So the concept of Dan, uh, of the lower Dantian is that it's kind of the absolute center of the body, top to bottom, front to back. So think of it if your if your body is say six inches thick or eight inches thick. So just divide that by two, and the center of the Dantian would be halfway. So we're looking at we're looking at it from that perspective. So it is your your center of mass in your body. And that's happening at a substantial level. At an insubstantial level, none of that matters because it's we're talking about waves then. We're not talking about particles, we're talking about waves. We're talking about the it's non-local. It, you know, we can kind of center it around the uh, around the, the physical aspect, but it it's much bigger than that. And when we get into it, then there's a sense of, of expansiveness that comes with, with Dantian breathing. So, but we, the more we can, can activate that, the more energy there is available throughout the whole system. So then the second one is in the heart and chest area. We're not going to cover that this week. The third part, the third Dantian, is the upper Dantian. And that's going to be our point of focus today. And so, as like I said before, it's like you know, we associate it with the the third eye, the heaven's eye, and uh, um, and that is just like the the Dantian. That surface point is just it's just getting the conversation started. It's an entry point, but. Uh, the what's happening is actually happening in the center of your brain, and so uh, Yang Jingming says your brain is your upper dantian, and specifically we're centering it right in the middle, which is uh, uh, called the Niwan Gong, the the Mud Pill Palace, and so named because it. The mud pill was a was the nickname for the pineal gland. So it's the location of the pineal and the pituitary gland, and also the hypothalamus. So in, at a substantial level, what's happening here is it's happening in the center of your brain, between the hemispheres of your brain, and at this point, right at the bottom there, and right around your sphenoid bone, there is this location where the pineal, pituitary, and hypothalamus get together, and they control the hormonal reactions throughout your body and a lot of the uh, the neurotransmitters in your body. The uh, hypothalamus is the interface between the nervous system and the endocrine system. So your the signals that you're getting and translating with your with your nervous system 
are immediately queue up your endocrines to to get a response, what an appropriate response from your body mind into what's going on there. So that's what's happening on the substantial level. On the insubstantial level, we're getting into what the Taoists called the that is the home of the Shen, uh, the spirit. So uh, the the right there between the uh, the two hemispheres, there is uh, this location which is considered to be the home of the spirit. So in uh, we we talk about uh, the Dantian, the lower Dantian. We say you want to sink your chi into your lower Dantian. That means you're bringing your awareness there and and your feeling that, and by feeling your lower Dantian, you are amplifying the chi there. And then we want to, then the other thing is we want to raise the Shen to the, uh, to the Ni Wan Gong. So we want to raise the Shen to the, uh, the upper Dantian, while we also sinking the chi down into the lower Dantian. And so the idea here is that the chi govern or the shen spirit governs the uh, the chi, and you know it, it, it said that uh, if you focus too much on the chi, then it gets stagnant. You you do that until you can awaken your shen sufficiently to be able to guide your your energy and to be able to to uh, elevate your shen into that into your brain so that your attention is uh, is very robust and, and clear uh, in your in your uh, in your mind so you're so you're raising your spirit and so the uh, uh, there are th several things that we do to, to make that happen one is to to open the jade pillow gate. So that at the base of the skull, we have the, uh, right here, we have uh, the jade pillow gate. And if we're kinking the hose, primarily if you're lifting your chin and and slumping forward, you're creating a kink there in the, in the jade pillow gate. And that prevents the chi from rising and filling your, you know, the, the uh, uh, going and nourishing the brain. Because you need to, amplify the chi in your body mind in order to be create a a home for the spirit so that in order for the spirit to get amplified you need a lot of chi and so one of the things you do we unkink the hose so that whatever chi you got going can flow naturally into your brain it doesn't get stuck there in your neck and give you neck pain you know neck tension and stuff like that it allows to flow freely and um so that's uh the other thing is we we reach with the with the uh, the the crown of the head right here at the posterior fontanelle. So we reach with that, and what that does is it causes the the back of the head to kind of reach backward. So you're reaching up, and that that's kind of protruding backward, and that lengthens your spine and allows the chi to rise. So that it fills your upper dantian and nourishes your spirit, which then allows your brain to function at a much higher level. It also, once you do that, then it starts to you start to open your your uh, heaven's eye, and that allows you to to move into a super conscious state where you're you're able to perceive things that are are not easily uh, recognized by your five senses and your rational mind. You move into this place where you're getting a, a whole brain coherence that allows you to, to, uh, to move into this, this expanded state of awareness. So the, uh, a lot of the practices, the Taoist practices were about creating sufficient energy in the lower Dantian and the, uh, ri that rises up the um, the penetrating vessel along the spine there, and uh, through the jade pillow gate and into the brain, so that you're able to create this 
expanded state of awareness. So that's the the substantial and the insubstantial aspects of the of the um, upper Dantian. So the brain has two hemispheres. The left hemisphere controls the right side of your body. The right hemisphere controls the left side of your body. And whenever you get sufficient energy resonating between the, in the in the space between the two hemispheres, where that's what's called the spirit valley. And when you get enough energy in there and it starts to they, you start to get this hum, then it creates this expanded state of awareness. You, you, you're amplifying your spirit as you do that. So we're going to do a little something just to kind of grease the wheels for the uh, for this. Um, just to back up just a sec. So the, the two hemispheres of your brain handle different functions. So the, the left side controls the right side of your body, and it generally tends to do the handle the math. It handles it's uh, the math and uh, and the and, and the language. It's, it it does your SATs for you, so it uh, it it allows you to think in terms of words and also in think in terms of of uh, numbers. And so it's a it tells a story. Your left the left side of your brain, and um, the right side is virtually mute. It doesn't think in terms of words, and it doesn't, you know, think logically. It's more in terms of of uh, spatial relationships and broad concepts, um, Im impressions, uh, thinks in terms of forms rather than than details. So that they are connected in your brain, and that. Just at the bottom of that spirit valley, there is a, a trunk of, of nerves called the corpus callosum. And most of the activity in the brain goes to that, those things. And so it's a fairly slow moving process getting the left and the right brain to, uh, to talk to each other. And this is so much so that, that you know, a lot of times in, particularly in ancient times, they would, you know, people would hear these voices or they'd get these images something would be talking a spirit would be talking to them and uh, and so it'd be, they'd be getting these messages and you know from from the these uh, external sources and it's actually the right side of their brain the mute side was trying to communicate to the verbal side to the to the rational side and try to get get the message across and but it was perceived as being something other so Whenever you get these two to function smoothly together, we get something called hemispheric synchronization. And there are lots of ways of doing this, and something that I've been pursuing for you know since the late '80s, and uh, using primarily using uh, binaural beats uh, as a way of, of of getting the the hemispheres to to resonate together. But whenever you do get them to resonate together and you get it really, you fine tune that, then it bypasses the landline of the corpus callosum and you start to get this wireless connection between your, your hemisphere. So your left and right side are able to communicate in a language which is common to both because it's not limited to the to the rational language of the uh, of the uh, uh, left side of the brain. So anyway, get them together, and so you get you're able to access energy and information that is not available to your normal waking consciousness. So we've done this exercise before, but I'm going to uh, bring it out again, just as a way of greasing the wheels to get get us in in touch with the this hemispheric synchronization. Because if we can learn to control and regulate the hemispheres of our brain, we can then get them so that they can dance nicely together. They can play nicely together. And we can get, and that 
I believe uh, enhances your your uh, your ability to to process information on a multitude of levels, not limited to the to the narrow band of the rational mind. So the way we do it is we're going to get coherent uh, we, by pointing our index fingers, but we're going to focus. We're going to start by getting coherent with you by pointing the right index finger and you can wiggle it, whatever you just want to, what we're doing here is using the left side of the brain to create this effect. So like I say, you can point and you can wiggle it. You, but the important thing is you're really bringing that focus there to that right hand and that right finger. And what this does is it's tickling the left side, the left hemisphere of your brain. Now, shift and do your the left index finger and do the same thing there. This time you're using the right hemisphere of your brain. So we're access, we're consciously controlling which hemisphere of our brain is the dominant one in this moment. Now shift back to your right and point and reach with that, wiggle that finger and feel the left hemisphere of your brain. Now shift to the right hemisphere. And so what we're doing is we're getting energetically coherent simultaneously by we're feeling or consciously feeling and consciously doing. So we're consciously activating the right hemisphere of the brain right now. We shift back to the right finger and the left side of the brain. And now left side. Now just point both of them and just notice your, your mental state right now. So just notice that your mind is very clear and very focused. It's receptive. It can think very easily, but doesn't want to. It goes to the gap between thoughts. And it's very happy to just reside there and be aware. This So what's happening here is we've created a home for spirit there. We've created a home for our Shen, a coherent place that we've very quietly have amplified the field that separates the left and right hemispheres of the brain and in the spirit valley. And this creates this fluffs up the pillows and, and uh, you know, gets uh, everything nice and cozy for the Shen to rise and to go there. You have enough energy, you know, particularly if you tuck in the chin and you open the jade pillow gate, there's enough energy to allow the spirit to amplify there. So we're going to take that a little a little deeper then. And we're going to use another technique, something we've covered fairly recently, just a few weeks ago, where we, I did it then as a way of, of amplifying the nitric oxide in, in your body, which then creates a, a a much more highly functioning body mind, including your brain, whenever you amplify your nitric oxide uh, level of the body. And I'm not going to get into that in in a depth right now, but it's uh, uh, we're going to now shift our focus. We're going to use the same idea, but we're going to use it to vibrate the sinuses and the this this part of your uh, uh, your skull, so which is going to then resonate the uh, the spirit valley, going to cause that uh, going to give the going to cause it to to vibrate and to amplify the energy. So we've already created a coherent space for the for in the spirit valley. We're going to amplify the energy there. So the yeah, simple idea is you're breathing in, you're using your lower Dantian by your breathing deeply and you can put your hand on the, uh, actually put your left hand on your 
on the your lower belly. And so you can really feel your breath going into that. And then put the other one, your right hand, up on your, uh, your heaven's eye. And so we're going to inhale and then hold. And then as you exhale, you want to resonate this by humming. And then hold. And then breathe deep into your Dantian, your lower Dantian. Inhale. Hold. And exhale and vibrate that. Mm. And hold. Now let go of that and just continue to breathe. And as you inhale, feel the breath coming through your nostrils and actually feel it as it enters into your sinus cavities. What this is going to do is going to bring that feeling is going to bring more energy into the into the spirit valley. So continue to breathe on your own. Breathe deeply into your Dantian. And then exhale and you want to feel the breath coming and going into through your your heaven's eye into your brain, into your sinuses, and then and feel that energy into the center of your brain. What we're doing is we're linking the lower and the upper Dantians. And very gently breathing. Don't force anything. And just feel into the activity that's happening in your brain right now. Yeah, now let that go and just breathe naturally. But as you do that, you can, anytime you like, breathe into your lower Dantian, feel that. And you can also feel into your, your upper Dantian by breathing into your nose. And if you want, you can hum and vibrate the, uh, vibrate your, your, uh, that area that part of your skull, which will then amplify the, the energy field. So moving forward from there, let's stand up and we're gonna take this in and move it into something more active. We're gonna take the same principles there, but we're gonna do it while standing and moving. So the whole idea here is that we're amplifying the chi in our body, sinking our chi into our dantian, the lower dantian, feeling, feeling the lower body, feeling that pelvic area, and then also feeling the upper dantian. Okay, so start off by what we're going to do to help amplify the energy available. We're going to activate the three pillars. So we're going to be playing with the big chi. We're going to use the chi of the earth, the chi of the heavens, 
to fill up the body mind and then concentrate it into these two dantian so that we can we can feel the effects of having those two energy centers working in concert working resonating together so feel the balls of your feet you want to sink your feel your weight over the balls of your feet reach with the crown of your head tuck in your chin open the jade pillow gate relax your lower back and open your qua just a nice gentle turn there to remind you how to release your your hip joints and allow the the unkink the hose in the qua in the in, a, in the between the the legs and the torso and this allows the energy to rise from your feet and allows the energy from the heavens to go down through your body and ground out into the earth Reach with your elbows, arms relaxed. Open your shoulders, open your chest. Point and reach with your index fingers. And consciously breathe into your lower Dantian and simultaneously feel the breath going through your nose and into your upper dantian. And alternate feeling between your left pointing and reaching with your left index finger and your right index finger. finger. So we're taking that energy, that, that amplification of energy by tapping into the big chi Activating our three pillars. We're amplifying our localized chi by breathing, feeling into the dantian, the lower dantian. And we're focusing our feeling also in the upper dantian. And we're pointing and reaching with the left hand and then alternating the right hand and left and then right and back and forth. So we're combining several of these things to create a, a heightened state of, of um, resonance in the body. Heightened coherence in various areas working together to amplify the overall field. Now sink into your heels and continue. And feel that yin energy as you sink down, down into your heels. And once you set these things up, you let go of them. You don't have to be thinking, breathe into my lower Dantian, breathe into my upper Dantian, feel my coherence. You don't have to because in a heightened state of, of coherence in that super conscious state, it's being taken care of. It's happening. You've already established the program for it. Now sink into the balls of your feet. Continue to breathe deeply and fully. Continue to alternate between your left and right and reach with your wrists. Relax your shoulders, reach with your elbows. Very slowly bring your arm, your wrists up, extending forward. And reach with your fingers and open up between your back, between your shoulder blades. Open up your back between your shoulder blades and feel that connection. Feel the chi in your arms. 
Feel it expanding throughout your whole body. Now sink into your heels and reach down with your elbows. Raise the fingers as you reach down with the wrists. Sink, feel the chi moving in a yin direction, sinking down, down, down. And pause. And feel the energy. Now sink into the balls of your feet and feel the yang, this expansiveness where arms are rising, reaching with the wrists, shoulders are relaxed, like your finger, your wrists are being pulled up, and your fingers reaching, open your, open your back, and then sink into your heels, and you're absorbing the chi, the big chi, and allowing that to circulate, to resonate between the upper and lower Dantian, and pause and feel into the yin. And sink into the balls of your feet, reach for the wrists, feel the yang, feel that expansiveness. And continue to rise, reach with the wrists, open, open on the balls of the feet, feel the yang, feel the yang, open the hand, reach with the fingers, open the shoulders, and feel that expansiveness, everything, yang, yang, expansive, open, and then sink into the heels, and ah, reach down with the elbows, down with the wrists. You sink into the yin, empty out. Go to the balls of the feet, feel the yang, reach the wrists, feel the Lower Dantian, the upper Dantian. Feel your hands, feel your left hand, feel your right hand. Open, open, reach with the fingers, open your shoulder blades, open, expand. Feel the Yang Chi. And sink into your heels and reach down with your elbows. Feel the chi descending down through your feet and into the earth. And as we expand our Dantians by conscious feeling and conscious doing, we create larger reservoirs that permit us to hold on to the energy and allow it to circulate through the body mind a little bit better. And sink into your right foot. Pick up your left heel and step forward with your left foot. And keep your weight in your right leg. You're back weighted, about 60% in your back foot. Look at the ball of your right foot and reach with the wrist. Reach with the elbows, open. Feel the young, feel the expansion. Breathe deeply. Allow it to fill. And sink into your right heel. 
Push down with your elbows. Down with the wrists. Down with the fingers, sink. Feel the yin. And step back with your left foot. Feel your left heel sink into your left heel. And, and shift a lot, you're about 60% of your weight into your left leg. Release the claw, sink down. Feel the yin. You know, feel the ball of the left foot. Reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists. Feel the young. Open, open, expansive. Reach, open. Feel the yang chi. And exhale, go to the left heel. Reach down with your elbows, your wrists, feel the yin. Empty out. Let go of the chi. The letting go is just as important as the filling up. Ball of your left foot, reach with your elbows, your wrists, open, ball of your left foot, open, reach, breathe, fill, feel the young, feel, uh, ask the universe to give you more, please, may I have more, sir. And then, ah, sink into your heel. Reach down with the elbows, the wrists. And feel the yin. And ask for more yin now. Be open to receiving more yin. more tolerance of that, that soft, quiet energy. And step forward with your left foot. And throw that all away. And just Relax into a neutral posture. Empty out. And just be willing to receive the gifts that the universe has to offer right now. You've created a conduit allow the nourishment of the yin and the yang chi, the big chi, to permeate your body mind. I welcome it in. It's a lot, but let it in. Now step in and take a deep breath. Go to the balls of your feet, feel the yang. Sink into your heels ah, and throw it all away. Dissolve into the emptiness. Take a moment, just feel into that emptiness. Please have a seat. That's a nice space there, Letitia. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. That's really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's in front of a cemetery. Oh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> it has a nice sunset. <laughs> oh, good. Beautiful. <laughs> Great. Uh, how'd it go, people? Good, good, good. Um, any thoughts you'd like to share with the, the folks at home? Questions? Jonathan. You, you so feeling the brain that's a that's a tricky one um it's hard sometimes to distinguish between conceptualizing and actual feeling and the thing is i mean if i wiggle my left finger i can i can place a feeling in my left brain you know what i mean so i i, I don't know i mean it, it was just something over the years you just developed as a real sensitivity because i know you've done so much with different hemispheres I'm just wondering if I, I don't know if people just starting out have that sensitivity. I don't think I do. I, uh, I wouldn't think so, but that's why we're doing this. You know, I, we're this is uh, you know we're 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 sharing what's happening in the uh, you know where the sausage gets made. This is uh, this is how uh, how this stuff how this stuff works. And yes, I've I've been playing around with this for gosh thirty years now, so it, almost thirty years anyway. So it's uh, it's something that. You, know, you you develop a sensitivity. You develop a sensitivity for blood flow. You sense right. sensitivity for. I mean, it's something that that you can measure. Uh, you know, uh, on 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 various uh, you know mechanical or magnetic resonance devices and things like that. So as you tune into it, you start to notice it that there's actually there's there's something happening, and I you know. I, I remember, you know, checking it for myself at one point. It's like, am I am I imagining this, or is this something happening? And I had, was on a device where I was actually able to to track different different parts of my brain, and say, and it would light up whenever mm. I would, would move to that part of my brain. It's like, okay, so this is it's it's working. So anyway, so taking that and saying, all right, so now what are we going to do with that? And then mm. fitting that in with with the what is known about the left and right hemispheres and and how we move from no, that's impossible to oh, why not? You know, I mean, there's a time when carrying a phone around with a small computer on it was, or a large computer on it was impossible. But that was, you know, that was that was developed since I started, you know, playing around with this stuff. So uh, yeah, we we we've, we've come a long way, and uh, so yes, that's uh, that's something that we can. We can develop. We can, and and we, but it's real easy if you just focus on. We know that the left side of the of the body is controlled by the right side of the brain. So if I just move that, and eventually the substantial part of it comes becomes very obvious, and so the insubstantial part of it then becomes more obvious too, and so then you can develop. That's how I developed it anyway. That was interesting. I mean, the left right brain, I, I mean, I, I, obviously, we seem to have in the last couple hundred years overemphasized the left brain and measurements and science and all of that. It makes me think I should read more listening to music, like do those two things at once or something. Or play yeah. music. Play, play music, music yeah. is a way of getting, you know, getting the, uh, the, the hemispheric uh, synchronization. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to think, you know, about the music as you're playing it, but you're also having to hear it and you're, you know, there's all, all that's going on simultaneously. And the more you come, can become aware of the, the many different activities that you are doing, which you just kind of lump together. I'm playing my guitar to, oh no, I'm, I'm fretting with my left hand. I'm strumming with my right hand. <laughs> I'm listening to myself sing. I'm, you know, I'm singing. I'm, you know, you know, uh, there's, all these things, and I'm imagining the chord shapes I want to play. All these things are happening simultaneously in a super conscious state. But it's um, we don't pay attention because we're just oh yeah, I, I just play my guitar. Don't make That's a big deal. 
as you know, I'm, I'm often, I frequently break into song, just phrases here or there, but it almost seems as if that's a left right brain, you know, equilibrium check or something like I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm altering my brain by doing, I never thought of it that way, but I do sing throughout the day, not like here's a whole song, but you know, phrases sure. as if I'm like balancing, you know, yeah. I, the first time cool. I thought of it that way. It's interesting. Thank you. Cool. Leticia, you had something. Yeah. So for me, it was like if I couldn't think about nothing, it was just suddenly following the instructions that my body was into another place where I could barely really see what was in front. I could just see more, mostly colors. Like I never saw that door behind you and I could see like a special light in the door. Same as you. So I was like, what's that door for? <laughs> <laughs> or like seeing myself with I was like even looking behind me so it was like I just see like a light coming out and going out and it was not a body anymore it was just like lights and and switches which I don't know if I did it like I didn't really Wait, I'll have what she's it. having I, <laughs> what? I said waiter I'll have what she's having <laughs> 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 that sounds really cool. <laughs> it was fun. I don't know. That's great. Right and wrong. It was just fun. I was like, I, I was like too busy it. talking to have any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, look all these colors. Like it was like a, yeah, like like coming, showing in different areas in your space and mine, which are the only ones I can see. <laughs> <laughs> but it oh, was fun. Cool. Great. <laughs> and I had this like little something in my in my Achilles and it, and the pain was gone while I was doing that. And then oh, as nice. soon as we started coming, it came back. It was like, ah, I remember this friend again. <laughs> okay. So cool. I really I think I really like it. It sounds like a thing to practice, no? To keep like balancing. I, I, yeah, I, it's something you know, you can do like you know, one minute of it. You can do 30 seconds of it, you know, during the day. It's just like, you know, at any time you take that and just tap into that um, that energy, you know, I'm just gonna for I'm just gonna for three breaths, so I'm going to breathe into my lower dantian, my upper dantian, feel my hands and and like you know, get that whole whole body mind resonance going and then let it go. And just yeah, and it get looks so like familiar that, like... with it that it becomes becomes become something you can do easily and there was like a little holding in the breath or yes. not really yeah right yeah yeah okay and that's like the same that's last just to, just to allow yourself to tap into you know whenever you inhale your your that's a yang expansion and you're tapping into the yang and then exhale and you're tapping into the yin okay it was, i really like it good thank you good, thank you. good. Okay, anybody else? Valerie? Um, well, uh, what Jonathan was saying about, you know, actually feeling the brain, and <clears throat> because I was feeling the brain, which is weird. <laughs> uh, <you know. laughs> A little bit. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> so you know i mean while we were doing that and i was actually feeling my brain i was questioning am i really feeling this or am i pretending that i'm feeling this but i was really feeling it and so yeah no it was that was really weird it was not just it wasn't distracting weird but it was just like well good on you you can feel your brain that's cool yeah um and why not you know it's it's <laughs> you know it's part of you <laughs> as, i can feel your feet What's yeah i well I, feeling my feet and feel feeling my ears. Brain are different it's different it's different yeah. and one of my favorite things just the phrase hemispheric synchronization of the brain <laughs> i don't know why that is just to me it's, 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 it's just a, yeah like a magic incantation yes <laughs> and i will i will tell that to anybody synchronization of the rain. <laughs> <laughs> well in during a pandemic you know um i would tell people okay do this 
you know, we were, we had some kind of something that we were doing. I can't even remember what it was. And that, I can't remember. It had to do with the hands besides going back and forth. And I would tell him, you need hemispheric synchronization of your brain because we're sitting here and we're sedentary. And we're not speaking to people and you need to, and people just looked at me like, well, maybe they thought I was crazy, but I, I preferred to think that they were looking at me like, wow, she's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> so now I got this other thing, this other trick that I can, you know, show people, hey, do this. And you got that hemispheric synchronization going on. So yeah. it's, it's very cool. Right. And something that they're actually starting to be able to measure it. They're able to, by use, they use uh, the gamma waves, not gamma waves, uh, the gamma frequencies of the uh, of the brain it travels non it travels across uh, from without having to go through the uh, through normal channels so it's like the wireless part network and uh, so your different parts of the brain will will resonate and you'll be able to pick them up be able to spot that oh these two the two points are are talking to each other and uh, we're just tapping into that that level of technology. Because you know, up until recently, it was impossible, you know, impossible to even consider this stuff. And now it's like, oh, okay, yeah, why not? What else is possible? Cool. Okay, Scott, you have something? Uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> Ooh, words. <laughs> words hard. Um, yeah. I, um... Doing everything together really just, um, I mean, I was, you know, I come home from work. I just got home from work. I'm tired, but I don't yawn till about three third, two thirds of it. And by the last third, I stopped yawning and was awake. Um, but the. Bye, Leticia. <clears throat> all of it together. And what I find is there's a big portion of surrender that has to go into this to just mm -hmm. surrender to being what, what, what is that, surrendering surrender like surrendering. not thinking not like just letting it happen and not trying to make it happen yeah. okay okay and you know surrendering to just being here now and to be you know to be present mm -hmm. um to just you know to just really just let allow it to happen and to not let my brain say this isn't you know this isn't happening or you think you're making it up or whatever yeah. all of that and just just yeah. be there and let it happen and yeah i feel really yeah i i find it, 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 it it's twofold the phase one is i have to do it i have to set it up i have to set it up so that this thing phase two is i surrender i let it go and it's already it's already in motion and then i'm just tapping into whatever is going on there but if i don't do phase 1 and establish the conduit then you know i i'm just sitting i'm waiting for the bus and the bus is just not coming so right. uh, you know but if i if i do my homework and know the bus schedule then <laughs> i can uh, i have a better chance of actually getting getting a ride and uh so that's kind of the way I look at it. So it's not an either or, but it's just a kind of a both end there for me. Right. But even the, but the, I think even, for, well, for me at least, the first part, I have to not try so hard. Right. Okay. To, you know, just. I understand. Yeah. That's a very you know, good, very good idea. Just you want to kind of sort of a way, woo, way kind of thing. Like you put the yeah. intention there and you just allow it to happen. Right. Otherwise, I start getting hung up on my breath and my uh, my belly or something, and it's like, right. yeah. Am I doing this right? Uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How, how much? How much? How deep should I breathe? You know. Right. How much effort do I need to put into this breath? And how long should I hold my breath? Then I'm not really there yeah. anymore. No. I, I, good. Good point. Very good point. So we want to get it so that, and we want to get it so it's just natural. So as we get familiar with the process, then it's something you can do all day. And it's not even, you know, it's a thought away, you know, right. that, you know, that, that state is just a thought away. You can, boom. And then you can start playing games with your brain. You can start noticing <laughs> what your brain is doing 
and like, oh, hey, brain, what's going on? You know, <laughs> and you start to play with uh, with different things, like, hey, let's do a little, let's play a little game here, and uh, so you can you can do a little dance with it, and uh, your brain, you know, what likes to play too, it gets bored, just you know, doing the same shit all the time. So cool. So um, uh, thank you all so much. This is great. This is a, a whole you. lot of fun. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Love you, Maria. Love you guys. Welcome back, Jonathan. (laughs) Yeah, welcome back. Glad to be back. Home. (laughs) Home. (laughs) Great. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.